This is not a box. Well, it is, but it's not just a box. This is a fully functional camera with no lenses or electronics. The craziest part? A few weeks ago, I knew nothing about how cameras work. Hello, my name is Trevor and welcome to Project 5 on my journey to 52 projects by 2025. Cameras have always seemed complicated. So where do you even start if you want to make one? I chose to make a pinhole camera because they are the simplest type of cameras. They're essentially a box with a hole in one end. When light passes through the tiny hole, a projection is made. There's a whole Pandora's box to open for why this happens, but we're not going there. In any case, putting photosensitive paper in front of this projection allows the image to be captured. Finally, inside a dark room, the paper is bathed in a developer solution and a stop solution. This reveals the image and stops any further reactions. Now, to actually make one, I did more research. I found these equations to calculate dimensions and brainstormed a few more practical things, like a way for taking the paper in and out of the camera. After sketching a few designs, I landed on this one. And with that, it's time to CAD. A few test prints allow me to see if my dimensions and tolerances are right. They mostly are. With that, I 3D printed the final design. Actually, I modeled a tripod and then printed the final design. Print done, assembly time. This all clicks together, this tray slides in, the pinhole lens threads on, and the piece of resistance, magnetic lens cover. Mount this on a tripod and beep bop boom, we're done. Okay, so we can't bend it all the way forward. Loading the paper is interesting. It has to be done in complete darkness to prevent the paper from being ruined. However, I couldn't find a completely dark room, so I threw a blanket over myself with a red light and loaded it that way. I then went outside and looked for my first subject. I set up the camera, removed the lens cover, and waited. I forgot to mention, pinhole cameras have a long exposure time. It depends on the brightness of the day and a few other things, but after a minute and 30 seconds, I put the lens cover back on and went back to my room to develop it. Develop it. That's right. Oh yeah. Problem one. I didn't buy any developer. Instead, I was going to make my own. So I bought some ingredients. We have black tea, which has caffeic acid, which, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to pretend like I know what's going on here. I am the furthest thing from a chemist. Seriously, a few weeks ago, I made slime with a couple of friends, the craft you'd do at a sleepover when you were 12, and I crashed the freak out. But the internet said I could do it, and of course I trusted it blindly. So, yeah. A few mixes and a heat warped 3D print later, I had two solutions. This one is going to actually develop the image, and this one is going to stop the image from developing once we're done. Second problem. I don't have a dark space to develop the picture still. So I put a box over it all and covered it with a blanket. I sat down and tried doing everything by just feeling under the box. Shockingly, an image actually appeared. It is not perfect. However, for today, I got something out. I made a camera. All right, so scratch that conclusion. I just had a major breakthrough after editing the video and basically finishing it, being ready to upload it. But I have gone from stuff like this, where everything is pushed in the center and really blurry, or faded, to this, where it's taking up the entire page, and this is still overexposed. But it's way better than what it was. And you also notice it's the colors, you can see it better here, but the colors are inverted. It's only black and white, but the white spots are going to be really dark, and the dark spots are going to be really bright. So it's, it's inverted. I'll switch and you can kind of see better um, what the image should actually look like. But that all comes from because originally I had fully 3D printed everything except for the magnets that hold the lens cover on. It was all 3D printed. And that meant the hole too for the actual pinhole. And although I tried to keep the thickness as thin as possible, I could only go so thin with 3D printing, so I switched my materials up to aluminum foil, which you'll see here, and that went a lot better. As you can see, it's aluminum foil on both sides. I poked a little hole, and that made all the difference. I now can create images like this. This was two minutes exposure. I think I'll probably go up to three, four, maybe even five minutes exposure. You can see it didn't, there was a whole sidewalk here and it, it got none of that. 
But yeah, that's the actual conclusion of where we're standing. I'll still post updates and more pictures as I adjust exposure times. But now I think it's really user error and not um, problems with the camera anymore. So yeah, I'll, I'll finish with the regularly scheduled program. What I liked about this project is how it gave me hands-on experience and changed my view of cameras, which used to feel overwhelmingly complex. Because if you swap the paper with a bunch of little sensors, you can generate a digital image. Then if you swap the pinhole with lenses and shutters, you can change the duration of the exposure and focal length. Some additional electronics for automation, and you're looking at a more modern day camera. I am still no expert, but cameras have moved from the magical realm of how the heck does that exist? To, wow, that is complex, but I get the idea. I'll post updates here on YouTube and on my Instagram as I make adjustments to this design. All the resources I used and deeper explanations are in the description, plus the model download if you're interested. However, for today, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in project six of this year, and good luck with your own designs.